Today we're going to take a look behind the scenes at Reef Wholesale and dig in some coral spawning. So you also had some coral spawn here recently. We did. We had quite a few uh, Pasilopora spawning. Mm -hmm. uh, the mother's down there. We can go check it out. But okay. most of the, a bunch of the babies are actually over here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have let the, the babies be. You can see some of them grew much quicker than others. Uh, strangely enough, one of them is more green and huh. the rest of them are more pink. Um, what color is the mother? Is it all? It's all pink. pink. Yeah. But one is... Interesting genetics. Yeah. One is, that's the milkman, yeah. the Silipora there. And uh, we don't know why that one changed. You know, we lost a couple where they, where they just didn't take to the transfer well. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe the coralline grew over them, maybe a snail bothered them or something, not entirely sure. And strangely enough, some of them are significantly smaller. Yep. And some of them are... Quite bigger. Significantly larger. So, did you go around and collect all the little polyps around the tank and put them onto the discs? Yeah, we... We uh, went to the tanks and yep. uh, what we actually did is we found that on some of the pieces, they were growing on the concrete and then yeah. some of them they were growing on the tiles. So if we come down here, here's the mother colony in the tank mm -hmm. right here. Uh, we have reduced our feeding, so it's actually significantly reduced how much it's spawning. If you look at the rack, you can see little babies everywhere on the rack. There's a couple of babies stuck up there yeah. on the glass. And mm -hmm. so what we noticed is that many of the babies actually didn't settle on the ceramic tiles at the base mm -hmm. of the acros. Most of the babies seem to either settle on the rack Yep. Or they settled on the concrete plugs. Okay. Uh, so some settled on the on the ceramic, but a lot mm. less than what settled on the concrete. Interesting. So most of those ones were the ones we chipped off the concrete yep. uh, or scraped off the sides from having to clean it. Do you think there's anything in it or just the type of surface easier to hook onto? Or We're not sure. Yep. So that's actually why we would like to launch uh, a little challenge for mm -hmm. hobbyists. And the challenge will be to encourage hobbyists to spawn Silipora in captivity, mm -hmm. in captivity and to uh, try different mediums to see what the Pasilopora seems yep. to settle on. Okay. Because, uh, well, we'd just like to encourage people to be more active in their hobby and, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, get more involved yep. and enthusiastic about their yep. tanks. And, you know, we could learn something really valuable from it because we absolutely noticed that it settled on the concrete way more than on the ceramics. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't on uh, one type. So like there were several different bases, some concrete bases from Indo, some concrete bases that we made, and some bases had way more babies on them than yep. other bases did. Okay. So it wasn't even just like that it was cement, it was mm -hmm. this type of cement had more on it than this type of cement. Interesting, eh? Uh, it, was, it was very interesting. So with, so someone wants to try and get Porcillopore to spawn, to try this and you know, do some of these tests. Is there any tips to getting the coral to spawn or? Yeah, it's very easy. Yep. Uh, it's super, super easy. You need mm -hmm. a mature colony, so your colony should be around five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that feeding the tanks increased the amount that they spawned yep. exponentially. Mm -hmm. So we were just dosing with phytoplankton. Mm -hmm. um, we took an old, my old college uh, bar fridge actually yep. with some old dirty pizza stains in it. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> drilled some holes <laughs> in the top of it. Mm -hmm and put a dosing pump on top okay. and then had the dosing pump feeding into the sump uh, mm -hmm. so it was feeding basically uh, 24 times a day yep. uh, just constantly and uh, just phytoplankton from reef nutrition okay. and when we're feeding it spawns way more Interesting. so it's just a mature colony give it lots of light give it good flow lots of phyto feed, uh, a, a, uh, not a lot but a decent yep. amount of phyto okay. and it certainly helps it grow significantly faster were you feeding anything else or just phytoplankton just phytoplankton okay Excellent. Have you had any other coral spawn in the tanks recently? Uh, yeah, we've had uh, flower anemone spawning constantly nice. too. Yep. Uh, so we have a lot of babies that have popped up. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't seen any of the babies come to full adulthood yep. uh, since we stopped dosing phytoplankton actually. Okay. Uh, but before we were having some that grew up to like dime size oh, nice. and nickel size and then we couldn't tell them from the adults anymore. Yeah. I have one about the size of like a pencil eraser in my tank oh, right yeah? now. So. Hopefully yeah. it's still there when I come back after we go Are you feeding it, directly feeding yeah. it? Yeah, we were not directly feeding them. Okay. And we're very convinced that if we were directly feeding them, we would see their mm -hmm. survival rate and their spawning rates yep. go up exponentially. There seems to be a magic number where, which I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. you, you hit a certain density of flower anemones yep. per square inch, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then they seem to start spawning continually. Regular. So we have a couple of videos of them, uh, of them spawning, and, yep. and we actually caught some of the spawning events. Oh, nice! Right there. Oh, right? very cool. We're all supposed to go home. We just been unpacking a shipment. Yep. 
uh, you know, we're like shutting off the lights and then uh, all of a sudden we see that they're spawning and yeah. everyone's, oh my God, right? And then yeah. there's like five guys because it, it's <laughs> under the tank and like a yeah. few who are like crouched down on the ground like this watching all the flower <laughs> anemones on the concrete, you know, uh, just after unpacking a shipment. That's um, awesome. Great way to spend your yeah. Thursday night, right? Oh, exactly. <laughs> I've been in there. I've been trying to feed them super heavy, trying yeah. to trying different foods like I've been trying oyster feast and phytoplankton and reef roys and all these little tiny particulate foods just trying to hopefully yeah. fatten them up and get them in the mood. Flower anemones like to eat. Yep. I mean generally once you find a food that they like just keep mm -hmm. feeding it to them and they'll yep. eat and eat and eat and eat. Nice. Right so I used to feed them a lot of different pellets and uh, and they'll take four or five pellets in a day. Yep. I don't know that it's a good idea to feed them that many. Yeah. But really I wasn't nice. doing it on a regular basis okay. either. Nope. And on these ones we weren't feeding them on a regular basis. It's usually when they come in uh, we feed them, and these ones, I don't think they were ever fed directly, yep. actually. Yeah, it's just whatever they caught? Just whatever they catch. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Any other cool projects on the horizon? Uh, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We've had bird's nests spawning in here. Mm -hmm. We've had some green stylo spawning in here. Um, the bird's nest hasn't been that prolific. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pacillopora was, was much, much, much more prolific. Yep. Um, no acros, but we're not... We're not really set up here to do yep. acros. We're building a, a aquapora breeding system. Oh, nice! That'd be we're cool. starting to, but that's a little bit down the road still. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we got a few other projects in the works. Nice, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Keep me updated. Absolutely. Yep. A lot of people. We just started selling this tort. And people yep. are going crazy for it. It's very nice. It started from a half inch nub. Oh wow! So how how long did it take to go from a half inch to that size of a colony? Uh, from half inch to a piece that big, we're mm -hmm. probably looking at six years. Okay. Uh, yep. maybe seven years mm -hmm. and it's not just the one piece we've actually got a few pieces that have broken off yep. so you can see we got a couple other colonies down here this is the mm -hmm. same torch I haven't cut this one yet mm -hmm. uh, so this one has remained intact yep. and then these are the ones that we've started fragging pieces out of now do you sell most of this or is it more experiments and once it gets to the critical mass it's time to start fragging so it doesn't yeah take we, out each we, other. we haven't actually been selling any of this yep. ever mm -hmm. uh, we've never sold any yep. it, any of it and it's just recently since we ended the last couple sets of tests mm -hmm that we've had to start selling it out because it's it's too big yeah it's taking up too much, much space, space. <laughs> and uh everything's growing into each other like you can see the purple caps here growing into the true undatas mm -hmm. the tort is actually growing under yeah. the true undata <laughs> you know our pacillopora is is almost touching here and we had to cut out the birds that or mm -hmm. sorry the uh, monty here because they were touching as well yeah. um we had to trim these back literally you couldn't you couldn't move the pieces. They were mm -hmm. put together like an intricate puzzle yeah. where they kind of grown around each other. Huh. Uh, but, you know, a little bit of boundary layer and fighting, nothing major, yep. uh, but it was time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, uh, it's a little hard when they're that overgrown to get them, to get them out. back down to a reasonable <laughs> yep. size and get them out. Mm -hmm. And then when you put them back in, so these pieces here, originally we just had the four inch tile sitting loose, but once we actually went in there, yeah. Uh, we put <laughs> plugs under the tiles. This is a three inch tile. Mm -hmm. We put plugs under the tile so that uh, the tile wouldn't move around. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So now when we put the tile in, it sits in a, in a basically a defined <laughs> area. The problem actually yeah. we have now is there's so many little Pacillobora babies in here yeah. that it's, it, I don't remember exactly where it came from. So now I, I have a hard time finding the holes it goes back into. Oh. <laughs> because every yeah. single hole in the egg crate has Pacillopora babies in oh, it. Oh, really? There it does actually when you look in there. Yeah, every single crack. And oh. you notice the Pacillopora babies don't grow on the flat surface. Mm -hmm. They grow right in the, the, right in the corner. Interesting, right in the eh? crack. Must be Which when we had the euphelia grip. spawning, we mm -hmm. found the same thing. Oh, really? Yep. The euphelias, when they spawn, they're over there actually. We can see some of those babies. Mm -hmm. Every single time without fail, they only grew right in the corner yep. of the egg crate. They didn't settle on any of the ceramics we put mm -hmm. in there. They didn't settle on any of the cement that was in there. They only settled on the egg crate and they yep. only settled in the corners. It'd be interesting to try a more like poor ceramic media and see if it's just because it's a little hook or multiple places they can grab it that they settle? Uh, my understanding yep. is it's because it's it's that corner spot yep. and the ceramic plates that we have here are flat. flat yeah. So they're not going to like that surface. Yep. There's a lot of different medias that have, you know, cool shapes and holes, mm -hmm. you know, um, protrusions or, or whatnot to, for them to stick on. So yep. they do seem to like that better. Nice. Huh. Totally changes, eh? It's crazy how quick it reacts. Yeah. Yeah. So when that, when that goes, if you, if you buy one ever and then it comes to you and it looks brown, don't panic. Yeah. It's still a nice piece. Yeah. They're definitely one of the cooler creatures in the yep. oceans. Huh. That's awesome. What do you feed them? 
Uh, they're actually a filter feeder. Yep. So if you're dosing your tank with phyto or any of your smallest coral foods, mm -hmm. um, you can keep them alive. They do much better in a reef setting yep. um, because the higher the flow, the more food they get. Mm -hmm. um, so in a high nutrient, um, call it fish aquarium, they don't actually do so well. You need that uh, constant phyto slash coral right. feeding to keep them alive and happy for any length of time. Huh, very cool. Awesome. Expert care, but yep. once you got them going, great creatures. Huh, very cool. Awesome. Thank you. So this is Captain Smashy. He's patiently waiting for me to open up his jar. Normally these guys break tanks. Huh. This one eats from my hand. That's awesome. We've had him for a few months and he's very well behaved. We actually have a previously used Previously enjoyed, previously enjoyed oh, wow. mantis shrimp container. <laughs> very much escaped. Definitely do some damage. Huh. Yeah, very cool. 